This is the video where you learn everything that you need to know about the Insta360 X3 action camera. The Insta360 X3 is one of the best cameras for shooting 360 degree content. These cameras allow you to shoot videos and photos of everything and then later you or your audience decide what they want to look at. These cameras can also capture shots which are pretty much impossible to achieve with regular cameras. So they can be a little bit daunting if you're unfamiliar with how they work and how to use Insta360's software for editing and reframing. Maybe you've had the camera for a while and you just haven't fully got to grips with it. Well, either way, this video is for you. So before we start getting set up, let's look at the differences between the X3 and the X2. The X3 is noticeably bigger and a little bit heavier than the X2. And it also comes with a much bigger touchscreen. And another difference we can see is that there's two buttons under the screen at the front and there's also an extra button on the side by the power button. So what's new? Well, the most immediately obvious change is the 2.29 inch touchscreen, which is over twice as big and much less fiddly when changing settings. And combined with this bigger and bolder user interface, the X3 is much more user friendly. And this is almost like a smartphone screen now. A very small smartphone screen, but still, it's a big improvement on the little porthole on the previous versions. As well, watching back footage is now possible without connecting to a second device. Yes, you could look at captured media in the previous versions, but you couldn't really tell much about the shot, other than, you know, basically confirming that you'd captured something. So the X3 has a 1-inch camera sensor which makes it slightly bigger than the one on the X2. So that makes it 30.72 millimeters squared compared to the X2's 28.46 millimeters squared. So it's a small difference, but still, it's a slight upgrade for the X3. And in fact, the max resolution is exactly the same, but we do have the addition of the algorithm style of HDR. Active HDR is said to keep your video stabilized during the action while evening out the highlights and the shadows for greater dynamic range. If you reduce the resolution to 4K, you can now shoot 60 frames per second in 360 degree mode, whereas the X2 was limited to 50 frames per second. And if you switch to bullet time, the X3 allows 4K at 120 frames per second and dropping to 3K even allows 180 frames per second. Meanwhile, the X2 bullet time was limited to 3K at 100 frames per second. With the X3, you can now take 360 degree photos at a resolution of 72 megapixels. Compare that to the X2, which had a maximum of 18.4 megapixels. Switching to single lens mode, the X3 can shoot up to 4K resolution. Compare that to the X2, the single lens mode had a maximum of 1440p. Insta360 has added a new mode which is called Me Mode. This mode allows you to film yourself, have an invisible selfie stick and you just skip the reframing process. With the X2 we can film ourselves but some work needs to be done in post either in the Insta360 app or the studio software for desktop. So while this is listed as a single camera mode, it does actually use both cameras. So to access this mode, switch to single camera mode and tap the 360 camera on a selfie stick icon, which is the me mode button. And you will be limited to 1080p, but you can then choose 60 or 30 frames per second. The X3 allows you to shoot time lapses at an impressive 8K resolution, whereas the X2 is limited to regular 5.7K for 360 time lapses. Insta360 has introduced some new recording modes for the X3. So we've got loop recording, and this allows you to continually record video, but the X3 will only keep the last section of the video and you can choose to save up to the last 30 minutes. So this mode is designed to allow you to continuously record without filling the memory of your device. So this might be useful for a motorcycle dash cam, for example, 
or any situation where you're waiting for something to happen, but you don't know when it's going to happen. So you can just leave the X3 recording and then as soon as you have the moment that you're looking for, you can stop the camera to make sure that you capture it. There's also another change, which is the addition of pre-record recording. So this wasn't actually available to my pre-launch X3, but I'm told that it will save 15 to 30 seconds of footage before you actually press the record button. So again, it helps you not to miss key moments. So let's talk about those extra buttons which come with the X3. So on the side, we have a button with a big Q on it. And this is the new quick menu button. Tap it to open up a bunch of preset settings. At the top, there is a preset created by Insta360 called Skiing. If I press the plus button, I can load in more presets from a list. There's also customizable presets, which you can create yourself and then save, which saves time having to reset the camera if you have a particular setup, which you use a lot. Below the screen on the right is a single lens mode button. If you're in 360 mode, pressing this switches to single lens mode. And if you keep pressing it, it will cycle through the single inner lens, single outer lens, and then back to the 360 mode again. So they've changed the design of the USB-C port cover. It's just a small thing, but the X3 now has a cover with a hinge, whereas the X2 had this little plastic connector. So if you want to use the Insta360 Power Selfie Stick, you had to actually remove the X2 USB-C cover completely. And then you had to put it somewhere and try not to lose it. With the X3, you can just flip up the cover and it's really easy. So let's just quickly go over how to get started with your Insta360 X3. So to charge your X3, open the USB-C cover and connect to a power source. I just use the same USB-C power supply as I use for my MacBook Air and my Samsung. Before you start using your new X3, I would make sure to charge it first. Another thing to do before you start, uh, you will need to install a micro SD card, which will be used to store all the media that you capture. Open the battery compartments, pull out the battery and slide in the micro SD card. Insta360 recommends that you use UHS-I micro SD cards with a V30 or above speed class and XFAT format. If you've installed an Insta360 micro SD card, then it should be formatted already. But if you need to format your micro SD card, then swipe down, tap the settings cog, and then scroll down to SD card and tap format. Okay, so now we're ready to start using our Insta360 X3. So to power on, simply press the button at the side. It's the top button of the two side buttons. Now the X3 has two power saving methods. First, after a set time with no activity, it will turn the screen off. Second, if the camera remains inactive, the X3 will power off completely. By default, it's set to one minute before sleeping and three minutes before powering off completely. If the X3 goes to sleep, you can simply tap the power button once to wake it up. If it powers off, you're gonna have to power it on again. So if you want to change the times for auto sleep and power off, swipe down, tap the settings cog and scroll down to auto sleep. Auto power is just below. Tap the one you want to change and choose the setting you want. So even while you're recording, this sleep function will work and turn off the screen. But you can set it not to do that by selecting don't sleep. As we've seen, the Insta360 X3 has a nice big touch screen, well, at least compared to previous versions. The UI is also a little bit different. In the top left corner, we can see how much space we have left on our SD card. Top right is the remaining battery. Bottom left is the mode, which at the moment is photo. To the right of the mode is the mode setting. At the moment, it is set to capture 18 megapixel photos. Bottom right is the button which switches the monitoring view between the two cameras. To change modes, tap the mode button. Cycle through the available modes either by swiping or tapping and then either tap the selected mode or press the record button. Another way to change modes is simply to swipe in the middle of the screen and then tap to confirm. To change the settings of the selected mode, tap the information to the right of the mode button. For example, if I switch to video, you can see that it says that my current settings are 5.7K and 30 frames per second. 
To change that, just tap those numbers and now swipe or tap to select new settings. Tap again to confirm. To get more settings from that mode, swipe left from the edge of the screen. Now I can set exposure in different ways. I can set white balance and choose between three color profiles, which are vivid, log, and standard. Whatever mode you're in, swipe down from the top to open up some more general options, which includes the settings cog. Finally, to view your media gallery, swipe right from the edge. And as I say, with this nice big screen, you can get a pretty good view of what you've shot. And of course, if you have a 360 video, you can swipe on the screen to change the view. Tap the button top left to see your gallery in a thumbnail mode. Now tap the top right button to allow you to select and then delete multiple files, which is gonna be faster than if you just deleted them one by one. If you wanna change the view of the preview window in the X3, you need to long press on the screen and now you're in a different mode and you can just swipe to see a different view. So the way the Insta360 X cameras work is to shoot video from two cameras simultaneously and then stitch those two videos together to create one video with a 360 degree view. The Insta360 X3 allows you to shoot with both cameras, which is called 360 degree mode, or with one of the cameras, which is called single lens mode. So if you choose single lens, apart from the addition of me mode, there are gonna be fewer options available below. And the thing is that although me mode is under the single lens tab, in fact, it does use both cameras and then stitches them together. But the video you get is not a 360 degree video. So it has a fixed point of view. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can also use the lens selector button bottom right to cycle through single lens and 360 modes. To utilize the full power of the 360 degree video, we usually place it on a rod like this. And Insta360 has actually sent me three different types to try. So I've got the standard selfie stick, which works fine. I have the power selfie stick, which allows you to start and stop recording using the record button on the handle of the stick. And also it acts as a backup battery as well, so that it will give you longer lasting battery on your X3. Plus I have the extended edition selfie stick, which reaches up to three meters. And this allows you to get real drone style shots. That said, I did find that with the heavier X3 on the end and extended to the full three meters, it's a bit harder to hold and a little bit more wobbly. That said, I still got the shots pretty much okay. This is how to set your Insta360 X3 to shoot the best quality video. In settings, swipe down to video bitrate and then set this to high. And below that, set the video sharpness to medium or low. So if you select high, then your video might look a little bit over sharpened and it also might include more digital artifacts. But if you do feel that your video is coming out too soft, you can always add sharpness later when you're editing. If we go back to video mode, and just make sure that you have 5.7K resolution selected and 30 frames per second. So there's also an option to switch to active HDR video. And if you switch to this mode, this should even out the dark and light areas of the image. So that can be good for bright light conditions. So when we capture 360 media, we can simply use it as 360 media. Then we can upload to a platform like YouTube, which supports 360 degree video, and people can view it on 360 headsets or using their smartphones. So with your smartphone, you can just move it around to change the viewing angle as you watch it. And that actually includes 360 degree photos, which can be uploaded to a platform, for example, Facebook, so that viewers can then move their phone or their mouse to view different parts of the photo. Another way to use 360 media is to reframe it and then export it as regular video. To do this, we can either use the Insta360 app for smartphones or Insta360 Studio for desktop. So if you're looking for the best quality video, then I recommend that you use Studio. For editing on the go and tons of fun features, presets and more, you can use the app. Open the app and connect to the X3 via Bluetooth. Make sure both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are enabled. If this is the first time connecting the app, it's gonna ask you to activate the camera first. Once connected, tap the album button. 
The app will now access the video files from the camera or from the phone if you have downloaded them. If you play a video, you're actually streaming it via Bluetooth from the X3's memory. Now you can see where the video files are by using this drop down menu in the top left corner. All shows you videos on your phone and on the camera. Select local to see videos stored on your phone or camera for videos there. Using the app, you can move files from the X3 to your phone, as well as for editing clips. When editing clips, you can either edit them while they're still on the camera or on your phone, but it's probably best to move them to your phone for a better experience. The Insta360 app also works as a remote, so you can start and stop recording, change settings on the camera, and as well, you can access features like the fly through effect. If we tap to open a 360 video file, we can now edit this file, adding various adjustments, filters and effects, as well as one of the main tasks of editing 360 video, which is reframing. To play a clip, tap the screen. And now at the top, we can switch between snap and edit. If we switch to snap, when we move our phone around, it changes the view of the camera. Tap the button bottom left to change the aspect ratio of the frame. Choices are standard 16 by 9, 1 by 1, that widescreen cinematic 2.35 to 1, and finally the vertical format 9 by 16. Swipe along the timeline at the bottom to move the playhead to where you want your clip to start. Tap the record button and the video will play. Any movements of the phone are going to be recorded, or you can swipe the screen to change the view that way instead. As well, you can use the slider to zoom in and out. And as you can see, it's as if we're back there filming with our smartphone, deciding which angle to capture. When you stop recording, a new clip is going to be created below the main video image. And you can keep recording to capture various clips and they're going to be added below. So tap export and then tap export to phone album. Each clip is going to be saved as an individual clip in your album. If you tap create a new story, the clips will be added to the app's inbuilt video editor. And then when you return to the snap window, those clips are going to be gone. If I switch back to edit, we can now go through the important features and functionality here. So at the bottom, we have the video timeline and the playhead marked by a white line and a yellow circle with a plus sign. The yellow circle is the button for adding keyframes. Swipe to position the playhead. Tap the plus button to add a keyframe. To delete a keyframe, just tap the same button. And once you've added a keyframe, keyframe options are going to appear above the timeline. We can select field of view settings from narrow to the widest setting, which is tiny planet. We can also create a custom field using two fingers. If we move along the timeline, add another keyframe and then change the field of view. When we play between the keyframes, the field of view is going to change from the first setting to the second. So this allows us to, for example, zoom in and out during a shot. If we select viewfinder, we now get a zoom slider with a record button. And this slider goes from close up to tiny planet. Moving the phone around again changes the view. If we press record, the video starts playing and we can record zoom and view changes, moving the slider and the phone around at the same time. And to stop recording, just remove your finger. And the movement that we just recorded will be represented as a red area on the timeline. Now we can select this area, and if we don't like what we did, we can just delete it by tapping that trash can. Now, Deep Track allows you to track an object or person. Uh, tap Deep Track and now draw your finger over the object. In this case, I'm just going to track myself. Tap this button and it's going to start tracking. A yellow area on the timeline marks the tracking data. Tap to stop tracking and you can tap the yellow area and then tap the trash can again to delete that tracking data if you didn't like what you did. And then you can redo it. And you can also change the field of view here. Now, if you've made an adjustment, you might need to just tap here to update keyframe to make sure that you've saved that change. Now, tap rotate to bring up a roll controller. Swipe left and right to set the roll angle of the camera. So we can actually use this feature to program a barrel roll into the video. You can simply place a keyframe at the point where you want the barrel roll to end and change the rotation. Now play from the beginning and you can see the barrel roll. Or you can place a keyframe where you want the barrel roll to start 
and then another one where you want it to end. Those are just two options, but of course you can get as complex as you like here, adding a number of keyframes with all kinds of different settings. The final setting here is snapshot, which simply saves the current frame as a still image. So I think most of us know what trim does, just slide the ends to trim off unwanted footage. Color Plus simply makes the video look a little bit more dynamic, more colorful, more contrasty. And this can be useful if you filmed during a cloudy day and everything looks a bit flat. But if you had a bright sunny day, adding Color Plus might just be too much. Now Multi View allows you to set a picture within a picture using different views. Tap the plus sign to set a start point. Swipe the timeline, set an end point by tapping the tick, and now choose one of the three options. You're still able to set the view of one of the images. The third option uses the two cameras, one above and one below. And this is recommended for shooting the front and back view from a car, for example. But I mean, you could use it for all kinds of things. Freeze Frame allows you to add a super slow motion effect at the same time as a camera movement between two points. And this is good for dramatic moments in a video, particularly any kind of sport action, or maybe something like jumping into a pool. Again, you can just get creative here. Now tap speed and tap a speed listed. You can go from one quarter speed up to 64 times the normal speed. So that's from slow motion up to a very fast time-lapse type shot. Swipe the timeline to select an area of the video where you want the speed to occur. And if you toggle on motion blur, it's gonna give the video a really distinctive look where anything that's going past looks like it's speeding past and with this kind of blurry streak. If you tap the three dots in the top corner, you'll find various options. It's best to keep flow state stabilization on, otherwise your footage probably won't look too smooth. For reframing, make sure direction lock is off. With direction lock on, the camera is only going to face in one direction for the whole clip instead of following your movements. With identify tracking targets enabled, the app will search the video for objects to track. But you might find it easier just to do this manually, which is pretty easy. So I usually have this switched off. Chromatic calibration, just make sure the colors match from both cameras. Aquavision 2.0 is for underwater footage. So if you've got some underwater footage, you can switch this on and it will remove some of that blue hue that you get when you're underwater. Under the accessories tab are buttons to enable settings for use with various accessories. So the easiest way to reframe footage is to use auto frame. When you tap this button, the app AI analyzes the clip to find what it believes are the best bits and then frames them in a certain way. And if you look closely, you'll see different icons in the top left corner of each clip. And these represent different types of shot. For example, an arrow here means that the camera is gonna be looking forwards. Figure icon, that looks like it's running. And that means that the camera is gonna to try to track a person. And it won't necessarily be you. The AI might just decide to track some random person that's walking past. Now you can select one or more of these clips and then tap save. Those clips will now be placed together on the timeline at the bottom with a white line indicating a cut between two clips. I found that when using the app, if you want to zoom out as far as possible, it can take a bit of playing around with, and sometimes it's actually hard to get it to zoom out fully. Now, when you zoom out using your fingers or the slider, it tells you the custom setting number here. The maximum that this can go to should be 150. So if you find this setting is below 150, but you can't make it go any higher, then try this little trick. Because when I'm just pinching, all I can go to is 130. So switch to snap, pull the slider down and switch back. Add a keyframe and now the custom setting is 150. And actually, when you use the studio editing software, you can zoom out even further. I found that it could go up to 179. To use Insta360 Studio, you need to download it from the Insta360 website and then install. To import media that you've recorded on your X3, first switch on the X3. And now make sure that you have USB mode set to U-Disk mode. Swipe down from the top of the screen, tap the settings cog, and where it says USB mode, make sure it's set to U-Disk mode. Return to the main screen and connect your Insta360 X3 to your computer using the USB-C port at the side of the camera. 
It now switches into USB mode and you should see a new external drive appear on your computer. Open the Insta360 Studio and it should automatically detect your X3 and then ask if you want to import all the media or just select certain files. On the left side, we now have any imported files. Double click one to open it in the main window and get editing. And you can actually also use the wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. To add a keyframe, move the white playhead line to the point on the timeline where you want to place the keyframe. Then click the add keyframe button. Now the controls that we get here are actually a bit different to those that we get in the app. We can manually set the pan, tilt and roll angles. We can manually set the field of view, which goes all the way, as I said, to 179. And we can also manually set the distortion control. As well, we have these four preset buttons here at the top. There's default, and then we have crystal ball, which is kind of self-explanatory. Then there's good old tiny planet. And finally, natural, which basically looks like a regular video without that fisheye distortion. Notice that when we click natural, the distortion value is set to zero. Now, if you play around with these settings, you can create some really fun effects. Another thing that's different about this software when you compare it to the app is that you can move the keyframes along the timeline. And this is really great for perfecting the use of keyframes to create the look exactly as you want it. And as well, if you have two keyframes, you will notice this yellow line between them. Now click this line and it's gonna bring up these adjustments which Change House Studio takes you from one keyframe to the next. For example, the change can be fast and then ease slowly in to the final frame. Anyway, you can play around with all these different settings and see which one works for you or for any particular shot and using these can make the movement look just a little bit more professional and less robotic. So to edit a keyframe, just click on it, and then to delete it, you can click on it and then click the X. Now, to track an object in the studio software, click Deep Track, draw a box around the object you want to track. If you want to keep the object in the center of the frame, make sure to check this box. And now start the track. Keep tracking until you're finished. Now you'll have this yellow section on the timeline. So click on it to change the field of view and distortion settings, or click the trash can to delete the track if you wanna do it again or you just don't like it. Now one thing to note is that you can't place a keyframe in an area where you have this tracking information. So click time shift to add speed changes. Place the head where you want to start the change. Click the time shift button. Now move your mouse to the end of the section you want to affect and click. Use the slider to set the speed from quarter to 64 times, same as in the app. The red section now represents the area affected by the speed change. So you can click and you can drag the ends of this red section again. This makes perfecting your shot much easier than with the app. And as well, the timeline zoom controls here allow you to expand or contract the timeline. So this is another useful tool for fine tuning your edits because if you zoom in, you're gonna be able to make more precise adjustments. So that's pretty much all you need to know about Insta360 Studio. The settings controls at the side are mostly the same stuff as in the app, which I've already covered. But if we click the I button down here, we can see that this video has a bitrate of 100 megabits per second. So this actually gives us a clue for when we're setting our export settings. So we want to export a video, click the big yellow button with an arrow, and this opens up the export settings. We can choose to export reframed video or 360 video. Obviously choose 360 video if your video is intended to be viewed as a 360 video. You know, for example, YouTube supports 360 video and this allows a viewer with a smartphone to move their phone around to see what they want to see as the video is playing. But apart from that, just choose reframed video. And now the important settings for the quality of your video are below. Bitrate here is at 75 megabits per second by default, and we can slide it all the way to 200 megabits per second. But as the original file is only 100 megabits per second, is there really any point in going higher than that? Probably not. 100 megabits per second should be plenty. Below that, we can set our own resolution. Now, there's no easy menu to choose 1080p or 4K. For some reason, we need to input the pixel numbers ourselves. So if you want like regular 16 by 9 4K, that's going to be 3840 
by 2160 but you only need to put the first number in and it will put the second number in for you so for encoding format we can choose the old h264 or the new h265 which is more efficient and creates smaller files or prores which is a professional editing codec by apple prores is going to give you the best quality files and they're also going to be easier to edit with, but they are going to be considerably bigger in size. So if you want to save having to input this stuff each time, you can save the settings as a preset. So let's call this one 4K. Now, if your video is a bit noisy, check the remove grain box. And now you can either export or add to queue. Use the queue setting if you have multiple clips that you're working on and you want to export them all together. So let's look at some more exposure settings. In either photo or video mode, swipe to get exposure settings. At the top, by default, it will be in auto mode. And if you want to set exposure manually, switch to manual. This means you can now set shutter speed and ISO manually. And if you want to reduce noise in your video, make sure you set ISO as low as possible. In this mode, you can choose to set ISO manually, but let the camera set shutter speed automatically. And this is good for letting the camera adjust exposure while making sure that the ISO stays at a minimum. And sometimes we might want to set both ISO and shutter speed so that the exposure does not adjust during the shot. As well, sometimes a shot is gonna look better when we set exposure ourselves. Now in photo mode, it is set to pure shot by default. Pure shot uses AI to enhance the dynamic range of photos while reducing noise and preserving detail. But you can switch to INSP, which is the 360 photo file extension name, or you can choose INSP plus RAW, which gives you a RAW file as well. And RAW is good for doing color work later. One thing I didn't mention in my X2 video was a setting called isolated exposure. And if you switch this on, each camera is gonna set exposure independently. So this might be useful if you have one camera facing towards daylight and the other camera facing inside an interior, like a car interior or a house interior. So swipe to open exposure settings. Swipe again until you get this little X3 camera icon and then swipe on isolated exposure. Note that when this is on, you're probably gonna get a line where the stitching is because you can see where it moves from dark to light. And this is what happens if you have each camera setting its exposure independently. So that's one of the downsides. Okay, let's go over some more general settings. To access general settings, swipe down from the top. Now we have a series of buttons to toggle certain features on and off. If a button is blue or yellow, then it's on. Buttons that are off are dark gray and white. The yellow speaker button allows you to toggle on and off the prompt sounds. For example, when you start recording, it makes a noise. But if you would prefer your X3 to be silent all the time, toggle this off. The indicator light is the light at the bottom of the X3. If you want to switch this off, you can do so here. To enable voice command, tap the button with the head. Next button toggles on and off quick capture. Quick capture allows you to start recording without first having to switch on the camera. With the camera off, press the record button and the X3 will power on and take a video. When you stop recording, the X3 will actually switch off again. The padlock button will lock the touch screen until you swipe up. The light symbol is a brightness button if you want to adjust the brightness of the touch screen. There's a button for connecting AirPods and another button for a Bluetooth remote. And then we have audio settings with three choices there, which are pretty self-explanatory. So now if you want more settings, tap the cog button. Tap voice control to get two more options. In language, you can switch between English or Chinese. Tap voice command to open up a list. If you have voice control enabled, you can use these phrases to control the X3 with your voice. Now, if you have issues with artificial light strobing, you can try using the anti-flicker settings. Depending on which country you're filming in, choose 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz. For example, 50 Hertz for Europe, 60 Hertz for America. The bit rate of a video is one of the things which controls the overall quality. Choosing high here is gonna give you better quality, but the downside is that you get larger file sizes. Now there's a new setting to the X3, which is this sharpness setting. And here you can choose between four different levels of sharpness. 
So in video terms, sharpness is when the software applies a process to each frame, which is called edge enhancement. And this can make your videos look more crisp, but it can also make them a little bit more harsh on the eye and perhaps a little bit more digital looking. So you could choose to set this to low or medium, and then if you find that it's not sharp enough, you can then add sharpness later. But if you prefer the sharper look, or you don't wanna to have to add it later, then choose a higher setting. And then finally, if you have an external mic attached, you can adjust the gain here. So here's a tip for using the bullet time cord. So normally you can just attach it to the 360 camera and then you can swing it around to get different bullet time shots. There's another way to use it. At the bottom of the bullet time cord, this sort of case part, this is actually covered with a piece of a sort of protector. So if you remove that, you can see it has a thread. And now you can attach your selfie stick. If you lift up this little catch here, and you can use that to stop it moving while you screw in your selfie stick. Make sure it's tight. And now that gives you some extra shot options. Swing it around. Or you can swing it this way. And you can also dangle it like a fishing rod. So if you want to learn more about filmmaking, you can join us on Patreon, where I have my regular filmmaking podcast. There's video lessons to watch and download for things like frame rates and shutter speed and how to edit your videos for complete beginners to up to more advanced. I've also got eBooks to download for things like the film look and how to use your smartphone to shoot video and all kinds of other stuff that you need to understand to get more professional looking videos. So that's it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.